For part F, we're going to follow the three steps that we follow to go from the time domain to the phasor domain. We're just going to follow them in reverse. So first, we need to factor in the e to the j omega t term, which means that we need omega. And we're given a clue that the wave is traveling at the speed of light. So we know up is equal to c. And we also know there's lots of different expressions for up. And the one that is most useful to us here is the one that includes omega, omega over beta. We're given beta. It's in the expression. We identified it uh, from this one, e to the minus j 100 d. That is beta. So then we can calculate omega is beta times c, which is 100 times 3 times 10 to the 8th, and we get 3e10 radians per second. Then, uh, let's see, so we're coming up with an expression for v, it's a function of d and t, then we're going to use uh, Euler's identity. So we're going to write it as uh, the real part of the vector phasor d, factor in that e to the j omega t, and then if we use Euler's identity and we take the real part, we're going to get, well let me first write our expression, so we have 10 e to the j 0.5 pi e to the point 1 d, e to the minus j 100 d, and here is our e to the j omega t term, e to the j 3 times 10 to the 10th t. Now we're going to use Euler's identity, and I'm going to pull this out so we get 10, and this term, which is also part of the amplitude, 0.1d, so there's no j terms here, so those go with the amplitude, and everything relating to the phase, which are the j terms, goes in our cosine. So we have cosine 3 times 10 to the 10th t minus 100d and plus 0.5 pi.